Oh boy. Let me make sure my mic is on. It is. All right. How you guys doing? Good, good, good. For anyone who's never watched my videos, and I shared the shit out of this video, so hopefully there's a lot of people because I realized I could share the video before I even uh, started it, so that saves some time. Um, feel free, everyone who's watching, share this. I like it. I like it when you share it. Sounds weird. But uh, so that today, I'm actually going to talk again about what I talked about yesterday just because I think uh, there's a lot that was left on the table and a lot of people had questions can you guys no one can hear it tell me if you can hear me i don't know if you guys can okay all right so stacy it's just you apparently all right so I'm going to talk today about, you know, cheap freight. I shared this out to some groups I don't normally do it in, um, and I wanted to on purpose. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of these the, these social media guys are all on, on uh, they're all at the GATS, and I was going to go and then decided not to just for convenience and all that stuff. Um, but... You know, we talked yesterday about cheap freight and how I was offering a load that was paying 240. I paid 244 a mile. Uh, <laughs> all right, Tio. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it was paying 244 a mile for 1,200 miles. And people said, oh, that's flat. Yeah, that's less than flat bed rate and blah, blah, blah. And long story short, it got covered. They're, they're almost to delivery. They're going to deliver it tomorrow. Um, but then I noticed there's a couple other people. You got one TQL rep who's in one of my groups that's posting rate. She's posting, uh, <laughs> she's posting really cheap, cheap freight. And then she she commented or something about someone's, you know, harassing her, which is fine. Uh, but if you post a load, a full truck load weighing forty eight thousand pounds, that weighs, you know, you know, forty eight thousand pounds of brick going three hundred and forty three miles, and you're paying five hundred bucks on it. Guess what? You're gonna get <laughs> ridiculed because that's cheap, no matter which way you look at it. I have cheap freight. I move cheap freight all day long, as I tell the carriers when they call. I know it's cheap. I'm fully aware it's cheap. I don't need constant reminders of it. Um, but you know, like I have have a steel load, so or I have these, you know, crushed cars, basically scrap shit, coming out of Chicago, going to Ohio. I'll cover one a day. I've got, you know, 40 plus a week. I'll cover one a day. My customer is okay with it because they know they're, they're shipping shit for pretty cheap. Um, and, and the carriers that are taking it need it. I know it's cheap. It's not the best lane, but that, I mean, that's, that's a scrap market for you. It's not going to be the best. Um, what are some of the other ones? Someone was and and then all the people sitting trucks. That's something that blows my mind too. You know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Um, and people were talking about, uh, how the cost, cost to operate is different. Um, <laughs> there's so much lack of education. I don't even know. Like I, I actually had a plan on what I was going to talk about today and it's all fucking bungled because it, you know, all the, you know, all the crap that's been going on that I read online, um, and all the different <laughs> comments about cheap freight and stuff. So I'm going to give, again, this is my perspective. So for anyone who's never watched the videos, because we've got 30 viewers, so there's definitely some more people in here than, than are normally in, and then people are going to watch this on replay. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, I used to own trucks. I used to have a fleet of trucks. I, I've worked on for mega carriers. I worked for mega brokers. I was a sales director. I was an you know, agency di director for you know a bunch of companies. I've owned my own brokerage. I'm now a broker agent with a big guy. Um, and so I've been in the industry for a long time. Um, that I, I think it's really funny when people don't understand the cost per mile calculations and then just go off calling shit cheap freight all the time. You know, saying that a load that pays two fifty a mile is cheap freight, and and I understand why because if the if it's coming out of a certain lane, you're not going to get paid shit, and I get that. But that's not the job of the person who's booking the freight going to that point. Um, you know, and that's that's uh. That's the biggest, the biggest, you know, I, it's, that's the biggest annoying factor in, in this industry is that there's so much, you know, 
<laughs> there's so many articles that came out yesterday where freight waves is saying, okay, the, uh, you know, market's picking up and it's good, you know, and they looked at last year's rates versus this year. And then now we're trending up and last year we're still trending down and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Hopefully the rates do come up for everyone. Hopefully they come up for carriers because then I could still pay them well, but also make more money myself as, as a, a broker. Uh, I'm different for anyone that's watching it. It's never seen it. I'm different than some of the other brokers out there, I'm not shitting on anybody. Um, but I'm different because I, I, I'm a volume guy. So I base all my revenue off volume. So if I move a crap ton of shipments, I'm going to make more money than if I'm only moving one or two based on the margins that I do. I do like four or five or 6% margins on the top end. You know, occasionally like yesterday on that load that I paid 244 a mile, I made 540 bucks in commission on it, which is 19.86% commission. Do I feel guilty about it? No, the carrier's happy. You know, the carry had plenty of money. You know, there was someone in here yesterday that commented that, you know, a broker started at 2,300 bucks for a lane and ended up paying 4,300. And then he saw the freight carrier's invoice and the invoice was for 5,400 bucks. For one, you don't know if that, I don't even know if that story is true. I can only take it from what he says, but that is, who cares? If, if you took the load for 4,000 bucks, how are you going to get pissed at a broker who's making 1,500 bucks? You're the one who took the load for 4,000 because it got to the point where you knew you either were making money or you weren't, but it, you're the one who took the load. That's why I always get a kick out of when people are like cheap freight this and cheap freight that it's the brokers are not the ones that you have to be pissed at for moving cheap freight loads. You have to be pissed at the carriers that don't know enough that are taking these cheap loads because what it does, like I explained yesterday, it drives the market down. And so the more carriers that are taking these shitty ass loads, guess what happens? The brokers are going to see that carriers are taking rates that are lower and then we're going to end up offering out those rates. That's just, that's how it works. You know, it's, it, and I read something, something else too today that capacity was coming up um, finally or fleet size, I guess it's something else from Freeview or uh, I don't know where the hell the email is. It was sent by our corporate office, but I actually saw it yesterday. Um, you know, they said, this, I mean, this is a broker thing, I guess, but you know, it's, I'm just going to read it. I'm not going to say it was from or anything, but this guy said, I think most everyone would agree that the carrier market feels oversaturated, especially thinking back to when it was the early part of last year, but is it really and how much? And then there's a chart below, which is, it's a freight view chart, so I'm not going to show it, but it basically shows, like, if you watch a video from freight views yesterday, it has the up and downs and they track last year versus this year and how it follows the same trend line. But you know, last year we were higher in pretty much the entire part of the year until we got to August. And then, you know, last year was leveling out, but this year, you know, the, the freight revenue is going up, meaning that the lane rates are going to go up and everyone's going to start making more money. Um, but the, I don't know how accurate it is because I was the one dispatching trucks and had my own trucks in the early part of this year. And I also had trucks last year. And I could tell you, there was a lot bigger difference in the rates that we saw in August or in April and March and February that I saw this year than I saw last year. And they, and they were saying the difference wasn't, it wasn't big. The problem with those kind of companies is they're getting ma the majority of their information. They're getting them from, um, they're getting it from, uh, you know, the, you know, the big, big chains, the big, the big carriers and all that stuff. They're not getting it from the little guy with one or two trucks uh, unless you're using a system that's feeding into their data. Uh, but they, you know, they say the number of for higher fleets this year from September last year to this year. Hold on. I'm still working. I got to answer these calls. Dispatch. Yeah. I just covered that one. It's taken down. Sorry. But, um, but yeah, I think I took it down. I should have. Um, but like I was saying, so, and I, I'm not going to show the freight view graphics on here because I don't want to get sued by them, but they, they show that private fleets are coming up, which everyone knows there's a, there's an abundance of capacity, which is ironic because there's a driver shortage at the same time and rates are down and blah, 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 blah. All right, let's see this. Christy said, you are just blah, blahing. If you can make a dollar, you would cheat a driver to keep that dollar. I can't give you more because it's just not in it. Yeah, well, that's see, that's someone I don't know how much experience you actually have in the industry, Christy Potts Huddleston, 
But I can tell you that's not true. That's not the way most brokers work. You got the guys that are big and doing it as a career. I'm an independent guy. So I make a commission only. I don't have a salary. I could go do, I could go work for a big guy. I have no problem doing that, except I don't want to. I like working, you know, by myself. But when you say I'm just blah blahing, if I can make a dollar, I'll cheat a driver. How is it cheating a driver out of out of money? If I'm paying a lane rate that the driver accepts and wants to take. And I'm making, you know, four or five or six percent on the load. How is that cheating, you know, a, a driver out of money? It doesn't make any sense. It's such a stupid argument. Christy Potts Huddleston. Um, and I don't mean to bash people, but actually I do, because that's a whole reason why I made the topic the way it was, because I'm so tired of seeing all these people just saying all the same shit that doesn't make any sense. Um Don says, according to Freight Waves today, yeah, it looks encouraging. Yeah, that's because their video yesterday. And I watched that whole video and I was bored and falling asleep. And it, it is what it is. You know, hopefully, and I hope for everybody else that the rates go up. I really do. I hope that rates go up and that way I can I can make more money and I can pay the carriers more money. But I can tell you the, the damn truth. I don't cover shitty loads. If a carrier isn't making enough for what the lane justifies, I won't bid the load. It's as simple as that. And and that's just me. Other people will like like the person on on my page that was sitting there complaining about you know that people are yelling at her because she had cheap freight. You were you did have cheap freight. You're posting a load for 340 miles, paying 500 bucks. Of course, you're gonna get reamed and yelled at. You're posting it on a, a forum where everyone is a tough guy because they're sitting behind a computer. Of course, you're gonna get yelled at. Of course, people are gonna complain. You know that that it, it doesn't make sense to me. Don't post those shitty loads online. You know, and, and, and yeah, I have rules in my, my load board groups, you know, the trucker load board and flatbed freight load board groups. I have rules on there that say, okay, don't bash the people that are posting loads. I've kicked people off for just blatantly just posting like shitty ass loads. And, and I'm a broker and I'm not doing it because of competition and all that. It's just because I, I'm a, you know, I'm a broker, but I was a carrier first. I understand the carrier, you know, the carrier side of things. You know, these uh, there was some comment that these guys are, you know, not taking two dollars and fifty cents outbound. Again, it's just it's a post. So I don't know whether there's any truth to it, but saying that they're sitting there waiting, you know, they don't move their trucks for under five bucks a mile. And trucks can sit, and I suppose you could generate enough profit so you could justify doing that if you are finding a sucker to pay you five bucks a mile, you know, all the time, or even shit once a month, once a week for you know a, a 1500 mile run that's going to provide you the same amount of income as running your truck you know for a long time so sure you, there's people that out there that'll say I won't run my truck for less than $3 a mile $4 a mile $5 a mile if you find a sucker that's going to pay it then good, good but I don't pay more than what dad average shows unless I have more in it to pay that's just that's it I I just I don't you know, and, and, and it's not that I'm saying, okay, I'm going to go and charge the, the customer a bunch. Again, the whole focus of the way I conduct my business, not everybody else, but the way I conduct my business is I try to get volume shivers. I don't like the guys that are shipping one off. I don't care about, um, I want the guys that are shipping a shit ton of shipments and I'll make a low margin, pay the carrier a little bit more. So they're happy with it. And then, and cause I'm still making money as long as it's easy stuff. Um, Molly said off subject, how do you quote piggyback loads? I'm assuming you mean like a load that delivers and then another one that delivers and another one that delivers and all that. I, I mean, just as you would quote any other lane, that's the way I do. I, and actually I've never even moved piggyback loads in 15 years. So you have multiple stop and drops and I've done that where it's like, it's booked as one load where you have drops. And as long as you just pay the total mileage and then, you know, per stop fees plus detention, if there's detention on it. Um, but if you're building it as separate loads each way, then it's got to be separate loads, each with its own lane rate. It's going to break your back and your customer's back. Um, but again, that's that's the way I do things. Uh, but, you know, that cheap freight argument is just it's funny. So many people complain about it and I don't care. You know, I, I kind of find it amusing. I don't really engage it anymore. I used to jump on it because I think that people that are sitting there shitting on cheap freight all the time should actually do a little bit of research and, and try to figure out what cheap freight is because I think some people don't even know. You know, I, I'm sorry, you know, Mrs. TQL who's on the page, but 346 miles for paying 500 bucks, that's cheap freight. That's freight I won't even touch. We get it all day, every day. We get these lumber lists where it's lumber freight and they're paying shit and, and you know, I don't work on them. 
And they're quick to send everyone their list because they want everybody to move their freight. I don't, uh, I don't touch that freight because it's cheap. I'm not going to be able to cover it. Why am I going to bother doing it? Um, that's, that, that's it, you know? So there's, there's all sorts of different, uh, different reasons why people do what they do. But I just think <clears throat> cheap freight is, is such a um, stupid but all right, let's answer some of these questions before I get tired of talking. Donald said, thanks for explaining the way you do business. No problem. You know, I wish more people would. I wish I, you know, not that I want competition making videos, but frankly, I don't care. I would love for people to be able to explain the way they do shit. If you're a carrier and you honestly have a $3 range where you don't move your truck for three bucks a, uh, for less than three bucks a mile, get on here and explain it. I'll do a combined video and we can, you know, make a video about it. Get on and explain why, how you can justify doing it. Uh, I don't think people actually do that um, that much. Uh, Mariella Martinez, have you had a shipper not pay? Yeah, as as my as an independent guy, as when I had my own brokerage, yeah, uh, <coughs> sucks. What can you do? <coughs> as a agent, uh, no, because the corp. Well, and even if they do, I don't see it now because I don't have like it's not like you know if a customer doesn't pay, it goes to the bond and all that shit for a broker. Um, if a customer doesn't pay, I don't have any recourse. They don't pull the money back from me. I get paid my commission regardless. That's the risk that they take, and that's why they're get, getting a percentage of all my business. Uh, Trisha said, do you broker a hotshot freight? Occasionally. So basically, the way it works is I have three or four main accounts, and I focus all my attention on those accounts. When I have dead time, like I did this morning, I then will quote out through my lead sources. I'll quote out like equipment moves, heavy moves, like that's where I got the load from yesterday, the crane move from California to Wyoming. It's it's a one-off shipper, you know, and, and the good thing is I can get credit set up for them super fast, but I don't typically, uh, I don't I, I don't actively go after new customers unless I'm bored. You know, I, I used to have where I say, okay, I got to make $250 profit, like take home every day before I'll stop. And what I would do is I'd sit and play on YouTube. The second I made 250 bucks, I'd sit and watch YouTube videos all day long. I stop that now. I still watch a lot of YouTube all day and I, I'm on Facebook all day long. It's on one of my monitors, just like an email. Um, and I'm on Facebook all day. But what I end up doing now is I work on my dedicated accounts, make sure all those customers and, and loads are going well. And then I, you know, simultaneously, like yesterday, I watched Suits and the show Pearson while quoting. I got 60 plus quotes out and I booked four of those loads this morning out of 60 emails. So you look at a ratio of, of you know closing rate that's pretty good in the industry um but but yeah so the only time i broker hot shot freight is if i just you know quote a piece of equipment or something like that doug smoke dog said did you say you don't pay more than that average show so i i and i did say that and i didn't mean that so what i do is i take the dat average i take truck stops average and i take our lane history average and i pay that out I don't use forecasted rates, meaning I'm not going to say, okay, in two weeks from now, this load is gonna, this lane is going to hypothetically pay more or less. So that's the rate I'm going to use. I use current rates and I get it from three sources. I get it from our carriers because I'm, I'm part of Trinity. So I can look up the, the lanes and what we paid for lanes. I use a data average and I use truck stops average. And, and I combine the three and figure out an average. And that's, that's how I do it. Um, and that's how everyone should do it. You should never use just that because if that's wrong, you're screwed. You should never use just truck stop because it's oftentimes wrong. And you should never use just your internal sources because what went a, a, a week ago is that lane isn't going to pay the same now. <clears throat> Joe said, what do you want to know? What I want to know is how carriers justify running for 50 to 70 cents lower than market rates. I don't know. It's see, and I talked about this yesterday. It's a break even. If you guys want, go to my site, uh, and you can do this later. I don't care, um, really. But if you go to freightbrokerlive.com, blah blah blah, uh, I have a blog there where I do a really, a really quick, um, a really quick, uh, like breakdown of figuring out your cost per mile calculation. Not, and it may not. It's not as thorough as some of you guys that are out there driving trucks. I haven't driven a truck in a in a minute. Um, and, and it was for, if I wrote down every single line item that you would have to deduct as an owner operator, it'd be 15 fucking pages long. So I didn't, I didn't deal with that, but it's a quick one. <clears throat> the, the reason, and this is the way I feel like you can, uh, 
the way you can justify it is if a carrier, if his cost to operate his truck is a buck 30 a mile and the data average is zone two and he's in a lane where he's competing. And this is going to get to Paul's question later because um, Paul sent me a message earlier asking a particular question about how brokers post shit. Uh, but if, if a carrier is, is, able to run their truck for less, of course, they're going to bid out the least amount in order to get the work. It's the same thing as a broker brokers do not, you know, not me because I never go back on a quote, but what brokers do is they'll bid out. So they'll say, okay, where do you need to be? Or what, what rate do you need to be at? Or something like that. See, they call me now and I can't answer. Um, and they'll say that and they'll be like, oh, what rate do you need to be at, you know, to the customer? And they'll be like, well, I have quotes for 2,800. Well, I could do it for 2,650 or some shit like that. And, and it's the same thing carriers. If you know, your cost, your, your cost to operate your equipment is less than what that average is. It's not necessarily that you're going to quote that if you're quoting that, then you're an idiot and you don't know how to quote your, yourself. But if, if a carrier says, or if you call a broker and the broker says, Hey, I'm paying 2,200 bucks and you know, your break even is at a buck 40 hypothetically. And that brings you at 2,800 bucks and you say, okay, I'll move it for 2,900 bucks. So you make a little bit of money on top. But that average is showing 3,000. If you're not someone that actually knows and says, okay, let me go check what the lane is paying, or you're not familiar with the lane, of course, you're just going to say, okay, well, it, it makes my break even. And so I, and I'm making an extra hundred bucks on it. I'm going to take the load. That's how carriers can justify running for 50 to 70 cents lower than market rates. Sometimes the market rates are, are nuts. If you got a lane rate that's paying three bucks a mile and, and it, no, nobody's cost for, to operate your truck is three bucks a mile. Now, if you go in an average, you could say, oh, I have three bucks a mile going in, but I only have a dollar 10 coming out. Okay, well, that's a difference. And that's another thing you have to think about as an owner op, as a broker, not as a broker, but you have to think about what the, um, what the expenses are coming out. So, and, and that, or what the, and, but brokers don't. And that's the argument that I got in yesterday. Someone's like, well, you're paying 244 a mile going in. Um, they're not, that was hours ago. <laughs> that's a problem too. As, as a, uh, <clears throat> as a broker, I get, so I send my customer an email cause they sent me low bids and I sent my customer an email and said, listen, I got a truck that could pick up a loan. I don't know why they said 1200 bucks to run from long Island to Ohio shitty lane. It's 628 miles. Customer wanted to pay 1100 bucks. That is cheap freight. And the reason why I'm working it is because they have a, uh, a ton of freight. It's like a hundred loads a month, but at any rate, I have a customer, a carrier that said, Hey, I could do it for 1200 bucks. And I said, all right, where's your truck empty? And they're like Plainfield, New Jersey. I said, you realize for you to get out on the Island, cause you're empty in Plainfield for you to get on the Island, you're going to lose a shit ton of money. Simple as that. Cause you're going to have all the tolls and stuff. And they're like, Oh, it's fine. We'll take it. That is someone that needs to be here watching these videos, you know, and I'm not going to book the load. I'm not going to call him back. He's going to pay 250 bucks in tolls. It's 137. So he's not even going to make it in time to pick up today. You know, it's it it is, but people need to know their cost per mile in order to be able to 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 get a rate. I, I myself as a truck as when I had trucks, as long as it met my qualifications for what rate I needed, I take a load. I half the time I would even check at that. You know, I've and and when I dispatch, I had people that would take loads for a buck fifty, buck sixty, buck seventy a mile. It didn't even matter what the lane was. If they were asked to quote, that's what they quoted because that's what they needed to make. <clears throat> You know, a lot of people think, oh, oh, you have to quote or you have to just book freight that's on the dad average. That's silly. Quote, quote what you need to make in order to turn a profit for your equipment in your truck. And if you're driving a truck and you're an owner operator and you don't know what it costs you to operate your truck every single mile from the moment you start that truck up in the morning to to when you shut it off, then you well, you have an issue because that's what you're supposed to know. <laughs> you're supposed to know. Andrew said, yo, yo, what's up, buddy? Andrew said get set up with me guys. Um, yeah. Uh, Joe said box truck freight. No, I don't really do. I mean, my, my partial account, the big, my big account that does partials. Yeah, we can do that sometimes, but it's, it's shitty and I don't move it that much. Uh, Ron Zoe said what load board to use for broker and how much is it? So I, I rep that. So I'm only going to talk about that. So, you know, that pays me a referral after like 90 days for getting people to sign up. That is a bit the best load board. I have that open and trucks out open all day long in my business. I use both of them as a broker. I, if I have like a spot quote that I'm not entering in, into our TMS system, I manually post it to that. 
if it's a flatbed load, I'll post it to truck stop as well. But always, I that's always, I'm just, I grew up with that. So that's a board I use all the time. If you guys need a free 30 days, if you're an owner operator, you can click this link. You got to write it down. You can't actually click the link. But if 408339, that'll give you a free 30 days on that. Um, someone else can take that and put that in the chat or something. Or if you go to my Facebook page, like my page, send me a message saying you want the code, I'll send it to you. But um, and my page is right there. But anyway, like I was talking about with these questions. But yeah, that's that's a board I use. Uh, I don't even know how much it costs. I think that power. So the what brokers will use is like a buck forty nine a month. Uh, and truck stop have no idea. Don't care. Um, I, and for me, I being an agent, I don't pay for the load boards at all. They're it's included in my, you know, the commission fee I split with them. But yeah. And, uh, Steven Gregory said that and truck stop top two. That is correct. There are other ones too. So I always say use that as your primary use truck stop as your secondary and get a post everywhere account. It's like 60 bucks a month and it will post out to every single one of those small boards that nobody looks at, but everyone talks about. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know how much truck stop is now. I don't really care. Um, that's what it takes. Good pay up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being a broker is not super cheap. You have to do your, you have to pay for stuff just as carriers have to pay for load worth or they're using a dispatcher and paying too much. Uh, what were some of the other topics I was going to talk about? I fucking forgot broker bashing. <laughs> All right. So everyone bashes brokers shit i did it when i was a carrier even though i was a broker there's there are just bad brokers out there there are there's brokers that are just they have shitty rates they have shitty attitudes they have shitty loads they have you know just whatever whatever the reasons for i just think it's funny all the time when people lump brokers together <clears throat> i bought that here i'm so i'm gonna do some debunking of bullshit Everyone that says everyone brokers are, are worthless. Yeah, Kevin, you pay $35 for truck stop because you are a carrier. You're not paying $35 as a broker, guaranteed. All right, anyway, um, I, I just think it's funny. When people are sitting there commenting uh, that brokers are this and scum of the earth and you know steal money from the driver and all that stuff, which is such a stupid fucking argument as it, as it stands, but... The the funniest thing to me is when you actually when because I'm a computer guy. So if I see someone's name, if I choose to engage in that person and get them riled up, I will always do my research first. And which means that I will know who they are, what a company they work for, all that, because you could find everything online now. And and I do that all the time. And the reason why I do that is because that way half the people that are sitting out there bitch, bitching about carriers or about brokers rather and saying how bad and evil and how much they steal from the drivers they're they're company drivers or they don't even drive a truck and and that's it you do have bad brokers just like you have lazy ass fat truck drivers happens all the time it happens you get shitty brokers and you get shitty drivers i had a guy that delivered a load five days late couldn't even charge him because my customer was like, oh, it's fine. So I can't charge a late fee because that's the way our corporate policy is. I can only charge a late fee if the customer is charging it because of the specific wording in my rate con. That has changed now. You know, I just docked someone 100 bucks for a late delivery too. Am I taking, here's how you know a good broker. Am I going to take that 100 bucks and say, ha ha, I just made 100 bucks? Fuck no. I'm going to discount the shipment to my customer and tell them that it's $100 cheaper and then they're going to give me more freight later on. That's that's the way it, you know, and that that is, I guess, how you can, define whether or not someone's a good broker or whether someone's a bad broker and 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 i don't know but i just i get i get a kick out of how everyone all the time is like brokers suck and and brokers steal from carriers and brokers this and brokers that it's just stupid it's, it's just really stupid um uh so yeah right broker may pay, pay more yeah they do um sean said national average doesn't mean anything regional average has more meaning yeah but they, that's when you do a lane rate and that or truck stop or anything you're doing a lane rate based on the regional uh, based on that lane it's not saying okay the national average for ohio to seattle is what you're going to use for a rate from new new jersey to north carolina it's it, when you punch it in you're not just saying okay it's not there's not one national average rate it's it's the rate for the particular lane that you're running and that's how people get it. I'm assuming that's what you mean, unless you're talking about fuel and shit like that. And then, yeah, it's one national average. Um, 
David said, I own three small trucks. Uh, I own a small trucking company and literally hanging on by strings, three trucks at the moment, barely making enough to, for them to make payments. I only use dispatch companies. Can't seem to find decent loads. Okay. So you're either running hot shot or straight truck and you're not driving. So I don't know what kind of truck you're, what, what kind of truck you're operating, but I can, I, I can almost guarantee one, you're not driving. So yeah, you're going to lose money. Two, you're probably running equipment that's not, I hate saying it, but not real trucks. So you can't, and this is the thing, it's going to piss off all you hotshotters that are watching this in these videos. Hotshots will not make full truckload money. Not with me dispatching out loads. I just don't do it. If a customer is requested specifically a hotshot, then yeah, when I get the lane rate, I'm paying whatever the flatbed rate is for that lane. But someone else made an argument about 20 feet of space, 5,000 pounds, and they're only paying, you know, it's going a thousand miles, they're paying a thousand bucks. It's a fucking partial in a lane that pays a buck 89 a mile. What do you expect to get? Well, that's almost a full truck for me because we only have 40 foot of deck, or uh, this guy was like a 35 foot deck, and he can only haul 10,000 running under CDL. Who's that's not the broker's fault. And then you're sitting there bashing a broker because he's paying a thousand dollars for a 20 foot partial. It's not a full truckload. Why would you ever pay full truckload money for a partial? Just because you're driving a little dually that doesn't really cost as much as a big truck doesn't mean that you get a special preference. Not you, David. Uh, yeah, so I'll take you down. Oh, so you're running dry vans. So here's my suggestion. One, if you're using a dispatcher and they can't find you loads with dry vans out of Chicago, uh, fire your dispatcher. <laughs> and, and, if, and you just said you're driving. So I have no idea. Either your cost is too high or your dispatcher is shit. That's the only, only thing I could say. Learn how to dispatch yourself. Do it from the truck. Hire someone just to do your paperwork. There are plenty of owner ops out there that have a wife trained to fill out paperwork. Do they trust her enough to look at the load board? Fuck no. But they could sit and look at a load board on their phone or, or you know, pick up a load and, and book or find somebody else or learn how to do it yourself. But, you're, I mean, clearly you're something's not right. If you're not making money with three trucks, with you being an, a driver, then, then you have an issue. And and I and, and and it sucks to say that, you know. This is from this is from someone that lost a trucking company. So you could take it for whatever you want. I had my own trucks. For anyone who ha hasn't heard this before, I had my own trucks. I didn't lose because rates sucked. I didn't lose because I couldn't keep up with the the cost of my equipment. I lost because I was growing and I kept hiring too many people and not qualifying my drivers properly. And what ended up happening is New Year or Christmas time, two, three or four years ago, however long it was. I had a driver fall asleep while driving up to Buffalo on whatever highway from Jersey to Buffalo, fell asleep, rolled the, the rental truck. Huge claim full of, full of vegetables and high-end furniture. Uh, it probably maxed out the $100,000 cargo policy at that point. A week after that, I had one of my semi-trucks pulling, pulling one of those uh, water for rent trailers. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're like the trailers that haul the, they're kind of at an angle like that. That's why I was doing that. Uh, rain for rent trailers that's what they were he's hauling one of those in patterson new jersey and you got some lady that rolled and i censored myself there if you can't tell uh but he was going through a green light coming up and she rolled underneath so the back wheels touched her car all of a sudden she was super hurt and big medical claims and they blocked the road for hours he then drove it home no not a scratch on the damn trailer but they ended up trying to sue us for a claim and all that stuff and then new year's eve i had a truck stolen so this is all within two weeks or three weeks of each other I had a truck stolen that was full of, uh, full of shit. My warehouse was in Patterson, New Jersey. So, I mean, I kind of guess I had that coming. Um, but they stole my truck. We never found it. So there was an insurance claim on that as well. So I had three different claims within 20 days. Guess what insurance did? There was a lot more to it. My insurance agent committed fraud, blah, blah, blah. Um, their errors in emission insurance had to pay out all these claims. So what ended up happening is my company essentially was blackballed from insurance. So I went from paying 17,000 bucks a month for insurance for that's everything, uh, workers comp and warehousing and all that shit to it was like almost 30. Put me right out of business because I was running so lean. I didn't have the money to keep up at, if I was not making the money I was making at owning the company. I still, and you want to talk about not having faith in dispatchers. I had 20 trucks on the road. I had two girls that sat there and dispatch. I was the one that actually called every single carrier or every single, uh, load i booked it they didn't do it they handled all the paperwork because for one i didn't trust them to book my own shit it's the same way i have it now i have people that answer the phones for me in the mornings because that's when i'm busy they don't even see the inside of our tms system 
They've never booked a load. They'll talk, get all the carrier's information. I'll then call the carrier afterwards to confirm everything. One, it's because I, I it's not that I don't trust him. It's like I'm too busy to have the time to train him. And two, it's not going to be done the way I want. So D David, again, to answer your question, if you're not getting enough money out of using a dispatch service, learn how to do it yourself and cut out that. Because that, that's part of your issue right there is you're paying someone to do something that you could completely do yourself. You just got to get someone to do paperwork. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Sean said, have drivers book themselves or find a dispatch company that cares. No dispatch company is going to guarantee a minimum gross. And if they do, they're full of shit. Um, and if you find one, go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll interview them for you live on the air. And if they're great, I will refer them to everybody that asks me if, if I want to dispatch again. I won't dispatch again. Um, but that, yeah, yeah. I, I, your best bet is don't let your drivers do it unless they're owner offs. Do it all yourself. You could book, if your drivers are under forced dispatch, you just book them alone. You get on there, you know what lane rate you have to pay. That's key. So you know what your deadhead mileage is, you know what your total lane is. Your lane rate isn't from pickup to delivery. That's not the rate you ask for. You ask from your last delivery to the pickup, then to delivery. That is your rate. So that is where you calculate your cost per mile and all that bullshit. And that's how you figure out what amount you need to ask, you know, for, you know, that's, that's why I, sometimes I'm surprised <clears throat> by people that just take cheap ass rate, but it is what it is. Uh, Ben said, how as a single person did I keep 20 trucks running? Well, for one, I was good. And I used a system that was uh, awesome. Um, and it wasn't like a computer system. It's just the way I did shit was, was fucking awesome. Whoops. I opened something on my screen. Um, but the way I did it was, was <clears throat> good. Um, I used for software, I used a, um, a software that was not made for trucking. So I did like LTL and stuff like that. Partials all in the New York area. So I wasn't, booking one or two loads a week for each truck i was booking like one or two pickups a day <clears throat> and i i just book and book and book my wife hated it because i was i was busy all the time she hated it so it, it is what it is you know i had good drivers for the most part and i had uh and <clears throat> i worked i just worked a lot you know you don't need to be the best at everything hold on but yeah, so that's that. Let me move this and but that's yeah, that's how I was doing it. You ask customer freight, broker freight. When I was a carrier, it was like 70 30 broker. Um, again, because I didn't have the time to go out and get direct customer shit. But we would get a lot of calls. But see at 70 30 percent was still good con considering where we ran. We ran a really tight radius. So we ran trucks cross country, but they were just hauling our, our freight because we we're consolidating all the shit from Jersey and bringing it to California and making delivery. So that was kind of our, our niche, or as you say, our biggest like customer was a third party company, but we did all sorts of uh, like business deliveries for them in the straight trucks. But yeah. Uh, David said, I've been in business for four years, August 20th, never had an insurance claim, never had a DOT violation. No, that's good, man. I, I, and I'm not shitting on you at all for, for what you're doing. What I'm saying is what you need to do is if you're having problems turning a profit with three, tru uh, three trucks in your operation, you either need to, one, learn how to do the job that you're subcontracting out so you keep that revenue because that's a big revenue. If you're paying 5% on someone and your trucks are each making 5,000 bucks a week, you know, that's, you're giving up what, three, three percent or 30 or three thousand dollars or fuck, I can't even talk. Whatever. You're giving up a lot of money, dude. Um, and there's no point in doing that. <clears throat> so, and, and especially if you're not, if you're unhappy with them, learn to dispatch yourself. At least you could supervise, hire someone just to handle paperwork. Shit. You could, I guarantee you could hire someone put them in a little office, some Regis office, paying 10 bucks an hour plus a commission. And they will do a better job if they're trained properly than what a dispatcher does. It's, it's, you just need to be able, and you need to micromanage your business. That's what I always tell everyone, whether or not your broker, carrier, whatever, micromanagers, the shit out of your business. Uh, JD said all miles. Um, I don't know what you're referencing, but John said, I'll try to.
take more time to find myself loads. I've tried the drivers finding loads, but it's cost me more money and lost time. Yeah. See, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that at all. I would just book, book the freight yourself, getting good with the brokers or shippers, whoever you're using, <sighs> getting good with the people that you're using. And then, uh, and had tell them, call me direct, call me direct, call me direct. It doesn't matter if it's a broker. A broker could still be treated like a customer for any of you guys who don't know that. And just tell them, call you direct. But that was a percentage thing I already addressed. I've got two awesome on calls, certified mechanics, where maintenance, every, it's crazy. I'm trying to do everything. Yeah, I, I again, I can't. I, I'm not running your business. You know, I used to go into companies like yours and charge an arm and a leg to tell you how to do it. I don't do that now. I try to give whatever advice I can to help it better. You know, but and I gave you my advice. Um, you know, <laughs> hire a better dispatch service and learn the business yourself. Let you should, as you as a truck owner, David, if you don't have the load board access on your phone or in your tablet or whatever while you're driving a truck, then I can already tell you're doing it wrong. You should have the load boards right now and you should be looking at them all day, every day because you are an owner operator. Control your own destiny. Don't rely on some shitty ass dispatcher to do it. And that goes for anybody that's an owner operator. If, if you're leased on to someone and you're running load board freight, then make, get your own load board access. And if they don't want to give you load board access, go to a different company that will. But uh, this guy said that 5% probably only savings at end of year. Oh, I don't know what the hell you mean. 5% isn't savings. It's a, or unless you're <laughs> trying to use it as like a expense. Uh, whatever. You could save that 5% and try to pay insurance for a whole year at once. So it saves you a lot. That's true. But it doesn't matter. Nobody does that unless you start with a big capital investment in, in the in the beginning. Um, I'm out 30% of each load from driver, dispatch, and factoring. What? Yeah. Well, that's including your driver pay. That's still not bad. That means you're paying your driver a percentage, which if you... That means if you're see, this is a thing I don't understand because I could never understand the whole people that pay the drivers on a percentage. If you pay a driver on a percentage, then technically they have a right of refusal for loads because if they don't make enough money on a percentage load, then they they could say no, right? And if that's the truth, then take them off percentage, pay them by a, per mile or per day or however the fuck other people do it. I never understood the 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 pay, paying a percentage of the load to owner ops or to, to drivers, to, to people that should be W2 company employees. You know, if you're, if you're dispatching somebody, if you're telling him where to go, he's a company employee. You're going to get fucked the second you try to fire him anyway, when he reports to the IRS for, for tax fraud. Anyway, uh, you said, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, Kevin Mack said, you're right about dispatch yourself. I get 98% cause two goes to factory. Right. You could do it yourself. Once you learn how to do it and you get someone like I'm guessing, Kevin, that your wife or girlfriend or kids or or hire a third party to hand out your paperwork. You could do it yourself. It's super fucking easy. I always say that all these guys that are like, well, I've been dispatching for 20 years. You got to pay me what it's it's so easy to do to dispatch. I could teach someone how to dispatch in a couple of hours and they would master the load boards. You'd think they've been doing it forever. Because it's not a hard thing to do. You have a cost per mile that you have to get, and you have a loads that are there. And all you're doing is calling and saying, hey, what are you paying on that load? Does it work for you what you have? No. You move on to the next one. Call that one. When it's done, you do about 15 pages of paperwork, and boom, you, you just book the load. You're paying someone. If you're paying 5%, say, on a $2,000 load, you're paying what? 200 bucks. No, that's on four. Whatever. You're paying too much fucking money to, to have someone sit there and do nothing because that's what they're doing. I don't care how mad any of you dispatchers that may be watching this get. I owned a dispatch service, a very big one, and I, I, I'm a testament to it. I made a shit ton of money, and the reason why I got out of it is because carriers, the rates went down. Carriers weren't making the same amount, but I'm still getting my 5%. So I stopped dispatching completely because it wasn't, it wasn't fair. You know, people started having a hard time paying me and I couldn't blame them. So you can't, you can't do that. You should be doing it yourself. And, and like I said in yesterday's video, a video, anyone, any dispatcher out there that's charging over 2% or like a 40 or $50 max per load at all, 
they're a scam artist. And that's, that's the way I think about it. They're a greedy, greedy person. And I don't care. Anyone else that wants to say anything about that and you don't like it, give me a call, bro. And that shit pisses me off. I hate it because everyone's like, oh, I'll dispatch your truck for 12%. <laughs> And are, are these guys that are posting online that I make set my trucks make seven to ten thousand dollars per week? And I just they're advertising every single day online. So guess what they're not doing? Dispatching trucks. It's it's common sense. I used to advertise online too. When I started doing doing advertising my dispatching services way back when when I did dispatched, there weren't a lot of people. I would I every single ad I put out, I would get 150 re replies from owner ops that need dispatchers. And it's great. It's great that people need dispatchers. But all right, let's answer some of these. So I answered this question. You should pay them nothing. No, <laughs> you should pay them no more than 2% is my opinion. Are you going to be hard pressed to find a dispatcher because you got so many idiots out there that are paying 10%. But in all reality, you shouldn't do it because it, and this is the truth for me to book a load for anyone, ex excluding all these little mini hotshot guys that are running around right now. But for me to book a dry van load, I don't give a fuck where you are anywhere in the country. I can book that truck, ha handle all paperwork, you say they're a brand new carrier, handle all paperwork and have a rate confirmation in hand as long as everything goes the way it's supposed to in about 20 minutes. Now, say that load is a $4,000 load. And I'm charging 5%. So what is 4,000, 5% of 4,000? Well, let's just do, say it's a $4,500 load because that's already on my screen times 0.05. So that'd be $225 for what just took me, hypothetically, 20 minutes to do. It's a, it's a ripoff. It's a ripoff. I don't care what anybody says. It's a ripoff. And then uh, I'm guessing maybe you're a dispatcher because of the way your comments, but uh, yeah, or, or no, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Keep your trucks posted and answer the calls. Always post your truck. I, I said that in a previous oh. video. Always post your truck. Always. Because it's such a huge benefit to have to have your truck posted because that's half. Sometimes you don't need to call on loads. Do I call on loads. So say, it, for example, if I post a load out and I don't get any calls on it. And then like 10 minutes later, I still don't have any calls. That's when I'll, I'll pull up the load board and I'll start calling every single carrier in order. Uh, and I'll do that every day if, as long as they're full truck loads. If they're partials, I don't fuck with it at all. Um Kevin or uh, David said, thank you very much for the information. I've been thinking the same thing. I just didn't want to add more to my plate, not knowing the whole deal. Well, now you do. I'm glad you're enlightened. Like my page, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. David said, well, we've only found percentage of best for drivers because we run only 18 to 2,500 mile weekly home weekends. I can't keep drivers at rate per mile. Uh, yeah. I mean, I get it. it to pay a better rate per mile, maybe. I don't know. I, I wouldn't pay driver's percentage. For, it's, you're just giving up too much money. It's your equipment. I, I, that's just me. You do whatever the hell you want. If I was ever going to start trucks again, which I never, ever would, I would never pay percentage, ever. Because one, it gives the drivers too much control over where they're going. And uh, no. And plus, yeah, no. Uh, Kevin, this is about you dispatching trucks. Oh, so you're doing all the paperwork and shit. Yeah, but it's just for you. So it's different. When I would drive a truck, I even on the times like I would book a truck or I'd take a load down to Florida. Again, this is before ELD and all that shit. So I would jump in a truck myself, haul ass straight to Florida from Jersey, do my offload, make it halfway up before I even tried to sleep running three sets of paper logs. And I'm not old. So that tells you that's not this ELD shit is really fucked it up for the older guys. Because, you know, I used to be able to do that. I can't even drive from here to Jersey. I live in Florida now, but I can't even drive from here to Jersey in a straight shot. Well, I probably could, but I have kids in the car and shit, so I can't. But and David said he pays 23% to drivers, 4% to dispatching, and 4% to factoring. Um, I don't know who you factor with, but if you're running three trucks and you're paying 4% for factoring, you should probably renegotiate your factoring contract with whoever you factor with. Because if your trucks are each generating, say hypothetically, you're generating two dollars a mile per truck at you know fifteen hundred miles. So that's three thousand bucks a week per truck. Three trucks. That's what nine thousand dollars. You should be able to get a much better factoring rate than four percent. And if you if, just send me a PM, I'll get you a better factoring rate than four percent, guaranteed. As long as we can get you out of your contract. Um, twenty. And again, the percentage. Yeah, I'm not going to touch because I don't know. 
Uh, what about factoring? I just said, I, I rep for OTR. So I get a referral, just like I always say. I get a referral for anyone that I refer over to OTR. Oh, so you're already with OTR. So go to OTR and say, hey, listen, I would like to <laughs> look at my contract. You know, especially if you've been, OTR is a great company. That's who I always try to rep with, you know, refer people to. They're not the cheapest, but you're getting a level of service that bar none. And it's better than everybody, in my opinion. And again, my opinion matters because this is my fucking show. <laughs> but uh, yeah, OTR is great. David, I know with OTR, you have the ability to negotiate your contracts when it, time comes up. Utilize that ability um, and to sell me on a cheaper rate based on volume. Um, but Don said average van rate as high as in the Midwest at $2 and capacity is good. Yeah. I mean, van rate is all over the place, all over the place. I'm not really going to talk too much more about rates because I am now tired of doing it. Uh, I already said that one. Don said, thanks. David said, OTR said, I'm going to send you a PM for your time. Well, if you're already working with them, I can't uh, do anything, but you could call your account rep and work with them directly. Donald said insurance. I have no idea. I'm not an insurance agent. <clears throat> I can't refer insurance. Any of these guys that are saying, oh, refer this business to them. You can't really do that anyway. You got to be a licensed insurance agent in Florida just to refer customers. Uh, so I don't refer anybody. I used to refer some people. Insurance and Limited out of Georgia or wherever they're out of. They were a good company. I've referred a bunch of business to them. But other than that, I don't really care anymore. So I don't. Um, and that's it. We don't really have many other questions we got what what is it nine more minutes we got to keep this going for an hour so and then i i put in capital letters on this you know comment and the reason why i did that is because i wanted everyone to know how super mad i was <laughs> at the whole broker talk and all that shit it's really frustrating i i'm a big fan of social media i look at social media all the time i read about what people are doing all the time i don't uh anyone who tries to send me like friend requests and shit, I don't, I'm not going to be a friend. Um, you can like my page and follow all the stuff that's current with that. Um, but you know, my actual Facebook profile is for me. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So if I don't have any other questions, so I'm just gonna, no one should pay more than 2.5% factoring. Just tell them you have a lower offer from another company and negotiate. Well, that's bullshit. Cause I guarantee you're paying two and a half percent or these companies are paying two and a half percent recourse, which is different because you're actually paying two and a half percent plus a 3% escrow plus you're paying or 5% escrow plus you're paying all these fees and blah, blah, blah. So that's bullshit. But who's worth to work with carriers or brokers seeing what you have been on both sides. I tell you what, I had more fun working on the carrier side. <clears throat> I actually hate my job. I hate being a broker. That's a topic for another day, but I'm, I'm good at it and I can make a lot of money but I, I'm not a big fan of being a broker because when I do have these shitty lanes and the rate is what it is and it's the average and but and you get a guy that calls and you hear it in his voice that he has to take the fucking load or he's just going to sit, it sucks. You know what I mean? And that's where I, I separate myself from some of the other guys because I've I've booked loads more than once at a 0% profit margin or if I have to at a negative percent profit margin but i'm not going to book a load i'm not going to go in red because the carrier needs me to go in red i'm going to go in red because the customer does but i i <clears throat> me i like the carrier side much better i just like it you know it's it's you already know when you're calling people you know that they need to talk to you <laughs> on the carrier side you know they need you to book that load in order for them to, so like when every carrier calls me they already got a leg up on me every single day when they call because they know I need to book that load. I'm also like, I'll just take all my posts down because I don't give a shit. Um, but but and for the most part, that's why I like being a carrier or a dispatcher even. That's why I started dispatching. When I started the dispatching company, I was a Landstar agent. I had 20, I think I had 30 plus sub agents that were working under me handling my big freight book of business. And I, I had a couple of guys that I would deal with and then they asked me to start dispatching their shit. And so it started off double brokering it through Landstar. And just like everyone else says. And, but I was totally up front. So all the brokers would call the people and say, uh, go light at the gym. No, today's heavy day. Today is heavy. Don said, he's guessing here, but I'm thinking you're going to go light at the gym up today. Light the gym up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am. Today's heavy day. 
So I got squats and deadlifts. So, so for anyone that doesn't know, there's still 30 people. I am a, I compete in powerlifting. So I hold four state records in Florida and I'm going to the North American championships next month. And then I'm going to the world in October in Ireland. I'm going to Ireland, which is pretty cool because I'm Irish and it's, you know, I got all the tattoos on me, the dropkick Murphy's tattoos and Red Sox fan, all that stuff. But yeah, I'm a big weightlifter. So I'm a big dude. Um, but yeah, today I actually took yesterday off so I could kill it today in the gym. So, and I don't like taking days off from the gym at all. Uh, cause I turn into an aggressive person. That's probably why I'm making the, the video with this ferocity. I like, I turned off my, my phones pretty early today cause I didn't want to, uh, keep dealing with them. But I think, uh, Ben, your question was good. I actually like your question a lot. Which one I, which do I prefer? And I answered it, so I don't need to do it again. But that that's my favorite question of the day right there, bud. Because I do. I like working on the carry side better. I like owning trucks. I like driving. I actually love driving. You know, every there's several times a week that I, you know, just wish I was back in the truck driving away from my wife, <laughs> away from my kids, away from the responsibilities of having to be here every single day and do all the shit I have to do. Going to the gym, it's a chore. I like it, but it's a chore nonetheless. All this, you know how many times I have to eat a day? I'm 285 pounds right now. You know how many times I eat? So I eat at 5.30. I have a shake at 8. I eat my first lunch, as I call it, between 10.30 and 11. I eat again at 12. I have another shake at 2. As soon as I'm done with this, I'll have a shake. And then I go to the gym. And then I eat again when I get home. And then I have a protein bar and a shake at 8 o'clock every day. It's a chore. It's a chore to be this awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys are going to be like, what the fuck? But I'm literally trying to kill the last three minutes. So someone ask a question, please. Because I, I, when I do upload the blogs and the podcast and everything, I like it to be right at an hour or above. But And I've been live for 56 minutes. So that's, that's it. I, I, like, I like being a broker for the money and because I'm providing a service for customers. You know, that's, that's the whole thing I mentioned yesterday. Here's something to talk about. So I mentioned yesterday in the video that one of my, the previous company that I moved down here for, uh, was trying to snipe my client, my largest client. Um, cause they knew who they were cause I used to work with them. And, uh, <laughs> so I, after I made the video, I, I sent them texts cause I'm like, this is fucked, you know? And I was, I was pretty ticked about it. And then I talked to the guy, the president of the company, he was mad that I, I'm an agent for another age uh, for another company. I may have actually talked about this in the video. I don't know, but he was all mad. And you know what? They, they tried today to book loads with a vengeance for that customer. He sent out 13 loads. I booked five of them. So, and, and the, the ones I didn't book were drastically cheap and I can't take. So I don't really care, but, um, that's, that's it. I mean, I don't have much else to talk about. I got to figure out some other topics. And this is another thing. I so what I do for anyone that doesn't know, because there's still 30 people watching somehow, I have no idea. But what I do is I take these videos afterwards and I upload them into YouTube. So they'll be live on YouTube in like two hours. And then what I also do is I rip the audio off it and then I upload it. So it's a podcast and the podcast is on blog talk radio, which if you go to my site, you should be able to see uh, it's on the Android store, Google play, whatever. It's also on iTunes. And so I'm going to try to do that more religiously because a lot of times I make the video and then I'm, I'm running late and I forget to do shit, but that's it. I'm screw making the hour. I'm going to end this video now. Uh, Oh, anyone that sent me a message about becoming a sub agent for me, I'm putting all that shit on hold. All right. So, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize how many people are going to actually reply to that. Um, I'm going to do it, but I'm just not going to do it right now. I, there, w there wasn't anybody that had the experience that I was looking for anyway. So it's going to be the mentoring thing that I talked about, but I'm not doing that for a while. So you don't need to bother. Um, again, knock on wood. Hopefully this weekend I'll get the, the website up and running the way I want and uh, more content. If anyone wants to be a guest blogger, you have an input in the industry and you want to write an article and shit, send me the article. I'll post it with your name and all that stuff to, perfect way for you to advertise your company, your brand or anything like that. But all right, guys, see you later. I'll probably be on tomorrow. Like my page on Facebook, which is right here. Like my page here, stay updated of all my videos. I post videos pretty much every day. If you ask these guys pretty much every day, but all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.